I'm up here today because this time of year now is when we do our stock take. And what that means is we've gone through a breeding season, we've witnessed matings, but we haven't actually trapped the females and counted our joeys. With devil facial tumour rapidly wiping out the species, a captive population is crucial to the devil's survival. With no cure and, and no vaccine in the near future, it is very likely that we could see devils extinct, absent from the landscape in the wild in as little as five to 15 years. And that means the only devils that will exist will be in the captive population at places like Devil Ark. That's it. Four females, but 15 traps. And I don't mean to scare you boys, but the traps need to be set properly. We need to catch them. And if we don't have joeys in the morning, we've got a problem. And no pressure, Tim. No pressure. Let's pick a spot, hey? Yeah. Yep. I like this face along here, guys. I'm going to head down this way with this one. Traps containing fresh meat will be left out overnight in the hope of luring the poor adult female devils. You right, Dino? Yep, this one's good to go. I've got a really good feeling about it. Oh, I hope you're right, mate. These little joeys, they're the future of the species. Uh, devils only live for six years. They only breed two or three times in their life cycle. So you've got a really quick generational turnover. And if we miss a year of breeding and we don't get joeys, your whole population is non-existent. Last trap. You've done all the hard work, boys. So all we can do now is wait for the morning. Fingers crossed. He's very dehydrated. Look at that. His skin is just staying there and not flicking back like it should. That's horrible, sweetie. Where have you been? At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes is confronted with a distressing case. This little puppy's just come in. He was found in a cardboard box on the side of the road. I need to have a good look at him to make sure that he's not unwell. OK, that all sounds good. No murmur. So that's good. His belly just is so bloated. I reckon you've got a belly full of worms, mister. The young orphan is malnourished and suffering from diarrhoea. Lisa is concerned that the tiny stray may be carrying the deadly parvovirus, a highly contagious disease common in young pups that have not been vaccinated. So I think we really need to do a parvovirus test. I don't think he's vaccinated, and if he's got parvovirus, it could spread through this hospital. Are you OK? OK, little guy. Oh, boys. Shelter manager Alan oh, Norris is caring for two surrendered miniature horses. How are you going? Hi. Alan, is it? Yeah. yeah. Chris, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Using the bucket to offset the arrival of the vet, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'll keep them nice and close. Hey, guys, how are you? One of the horses is in need of serious veterinary attention. So which one's Charlie? Uh, Charlie's a little white one there. Yeah. And this is Magic Mike. How did you end up having Charlie here? A pair of these came in together from a, an inspector seizure where someone couldn't care for him. And he's got a, a, a number of issues ongoing. We called Chris in today because Charlie has difficulty eating and he has a, a large lump on the left-hand side of his mouth. Thank you. Hey, Charlie. Hey, buddy. There are a few problems here. I can see the feet straight away. So was Charlie essentially a, a cruelty case? Is that why he was, he was brought in? Charlie's more like a neglect case. He was left in a paddock. Uh, the grass was quite long, so no one was monitoring his feet. So that's the reason he was picked up and brought to the Animal Welfare League by the inspectorate. Having a tough time, though. Yeah, he's been treated by a farrier for the feet, so yeah. the feet aren't the issue at the moment. At the moment, we've got um, something going on with his teeth. Yeah. While the hooves are hard to ignore, the real reason why I am here is also pretty obvious. You look at his mouth, and he does have a big swelling on that left-hand side, and apparently he's also having trouble eating. We noticed why he was dropping food at the corner of his mouth instead of maintaining it. Mm. And then this, this lump appeared. Charlie's years of neglect have made him difficult to approach in the open. Oh, the best chance is to get him in the stable. Yeah. He's, quite, he's quite comfortable in the stable. Yeah. It's OK. It's all right. It's OK. The two rescue horses are inseparable. Easy, guys. Good boys. We're good. Chris will have to win over the dominant Magic Mike before he can get close to Charlie. It's OK. Magic Mike runs the show. He may only be a bit over two foot tall, but he's the boss. It's OK. It's OK. You see that open door there? Hmm? It's good, doesn't it? Hey, it's OK. It's all right, guys. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's all right. They'll settle down, they'll go straight through. 
What are we gonna do with you, noisy girl? Huh? She's just a loud, noisy dog. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Brogan is desperate to get help for her 11-month-old French bulldog, Audrey. It's just getting unbearable for her to breathe. Her ribs go out like they balloon out because she's trying to suck in all of the air. So we just want to see if that can be fixed or if she's going to be like this forever. OK. This must be Audrey. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hendrik. I heard you were coming as well. But this is Audrey's appointment. She's the one who's sick today, so you're going to wait here and I'll bring your girlfriend back. Come through. So let's pop her up on the table. I'll have a look at her. You're a beautiful girl. Ah, you are noisy. My gosh. Excuse me. Audrey. That is no way for a lady to sound. <laughs> Sweetie pie, let's have a listen. That is loud. I can't even hear your lungs. I'm just hearing all this noise from your throat. I've got Audrey on the table and she sounds like a light aircraft. This little girl is snorting and snoring away and she's not even hot, she's not even distressed. I can't imagine how bad her breathing would be if she had to exert herself. And she's otherwise been okay? Yeah, she's been good. Yeah? Yeah. Audrey, sweetie pie, you are a noisy little thing. <laughs> hey? Let's have a look at your face. Yeah. Let me see your pretty face. OK, in dogs like Audrey, there is some extra tissue that basically is overgrown. It hangs down and it obstructs air going down into her lungs. And by flopping around there, it's making this horrible snorting yeah. sound. The other thing is you can look at her little nostrils and they're quite narrow. So and then further down, they can sometimes have problems with their larynx. Worst case scenario, if we leave it untreated, those problems with the larynx can actually progress and the larynx, so your voice box, where the air goes down into your lungs, can collapse. And if that happens, that's life-threatening. That means she, she wouldn't be able to get any oxygen in. She wow. wouldn't really be okay. able to breathe. So Audrey oh, looks Audrey. like one of the dogs that has been dealt the short straw. Yeah. A surprise for Chris has been brought in by Donna and Amanda. Yes, it is an African name. They're from Lottle, a specialised welfare home for retired zoo and circus animals. I think Dr Chris was extremely surprised when he saw Sammy. No, he didn't. Oh no, trust me, he did. He was not expecting a lion cub to come out of that little carrier. So, I guess the question is, <laughs> how? How do you have her and, and what is she doing in here now? Her mother, uh, Tansa, uh, was acting a bit strange with her. Being the first time mum, she was picking her up a lot, pacing back and forth in the den, wanting to take her out into the big enclosure. So just, she just showed quite anxious behaviour, did she? Yeah, very anxious. Yeah. She seemed a little stressed. We, we just got too worried, so we thought it was in her best interest to be hand-reared yeah, with us. absolutely. When Zambi's mother threatened to harm her, Donna and Amanda became the cubs' surrogate mums. There's no doubt that Donna has done the right thing in taking Zambi away from her mother. It's not ideal, but the reality is, kept in that situation, the risk of injury just becomes too great. I don't know whether it's just being an elderly gentleman or if there's something related to the lump or anything no. else more sinister. The lump, where's the lump? The lump's in his throat, sort of just below or around near the collar. You can feel it. Yeah. It's a decent sized lump. We're probably talking about two centimetres in diameter. Yeah. And it is sitting right in the middle there. While the location of this lump is making it easy to feel, where it is is actually a worry for me because it's sitting right where you normally expect to see a dog's thyroid gland. And thyroid glands are notorious for becoming cancerous. Do you notice any other change apart from his voice not being the same? Is he okay with exercise? Well, he's, he is panting a lot more like these days, but I put that down to being an older dog, you know, in the heat. So he's a little bit more breathy, and as you can see, this sort of panting is happening. Yeah. A lot of time it's around that, that neck area or across his, his shoulders here. At the Bondi Clinic, 
miniature goat Monty has been brought in to get a microchip. He really shouldn't be scratching that much. Mm. But Chris is now concerned about the kid's excessive scratching. As I part the fur on Monty's shoulders, I've got a funny feeling I know what's going on here. But rather than going for some sort of scientific test, I'm going to reach for some stationery. Let's try something with him. So, it is what it looks like. It's just sticky tape. This might look like some sort of kindergarten craft project, but using sticky tape is actually the coolest and most precise way of seeing exactly what's on Monty's skin. I've got my sample, but the fact is whatever is there is just going to be too small to see with my own eyes. We need some help with a microscope. Matt has only had Monty for 10 days, but they are already inseparable. He's fantastic. He's very affectionate. He comes with me to work and he's been getting the, the privileged life, I guess, for the last 10 days. He's been in, you know, lying on the bed and he just snuzzled up to you and, and it's the chewing noise I woke up to most mornings. You said you share the same bed? Uh, yeah. Matt's chosen an interesting time to tell me about the sleeping habits of Monty and the fact that he shares the bed because if my hunch is right, He's going to freak out when he sees exactly what's on Monty's skin. Ah! Come on, girls. Lexi. Yay! You're so clever, dancing. Look at you. Ah! The little chihuahua is now a much-loved member of Melody's menagerie. Lexi has the personality of a Great Dane in a chihuahua's body. She's absolutely full of it. She loves other dogs. She loves people. She's just a perfect little dog. The brave little pup still can't put her full weight on the injured leg, but Melody hopes physiotherapy will help. As much as we're working towards trying to fix the other leg so she'll be a four-legged dog, she functions so well on three that I think long-term, irrespective of the outcome, all will be well. Are you perfect? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.